Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the smartest, strongest, bravest, most perfect one of all? Galadriel of Amazon is the most genius of them all. In the history of film and television, there has never been a character quite like Galadriel. Forget Bella from Twilight, Rey from Star Wars, or Captain Marvel from Captain Marvel. Galadriel is the second coming, the third coming, and all the other comings coming together at once. She makes Mary Sue sound like Mary Who. It is now Galadriel with whom all future flawless, faultless women will be judged. Here's how Amazon conceived the most perfect character in all of creation. From a young age, Gladriel knew she was destined for greatness. In a paper boat float competition, her classmates can only look on in awe and wonder when not only does her boat float, it sails gallantly like the Mary Rose. In a jealous rage, a young boy sinks the magisterial ship but for Galadriel, it is just the beginning. For all men, young and old alike, will look on her with envious eyes. All grown up, thousands of years later, atop a mountaintop, a man tries to mansplain. There's nothing out here! Of course, Galadriel knows better and ignores the chauvinist elf. We are there. She decides to show him and leads him and his fellow male elves, Melves, straight to their deaths. They may have the power to shield surf and slay oliphants, but one wampa proves far too much. Only a woman with a spring in her step and the sword play of Banderos can take down the single snow troll. As a genius herself, Galadriel appreciates the genius in fine art and fine wit. Elrond says, I want to hear about you, your harrowing journey. Why, Elrond, you really have become a politician. I'm not some courtier to be placated by idle flattery. Small talk is far too small for her lady. Talk big or go home, or go start a fellowship. She has not got time for that or chit-chat. She does have time for a coronation. All hail the Queen of Middle-earth, or any earth, Galadriel Caesar. Today our days of peace begin. Evil does not sleep, Elrond. It waits. It waits for Galadriel to give it the worst beating of its evil little life and show it the light. The paper ship is now a real ship, and its rudder, its steer, its captain, and its anchor is the queen of mean feminist sheen, who now leads white melves into the light. They all get undressed, but it is not what it looks like, for this sword is the only thing that stands to attention. The weak melves are blinded by the light, yet Galadriel can see right through it, and immediately walks the plank. For me immortals, leaping into an endless ocean means certain death. For Galadriel, it means a relaxing dip in the local swimming pool, as no ocean or wave is a match for a current as strong as she. Where Michael Phelps would have drawn his last breath, she is only getting warmed up. In Olympic swimming, she would be in neither the male or the female category. She would be in the lane reserved for gods. Instead of setting sail for land, she takes pity on this stranded group of extras on top of a hedgehog. All the sexist males do not want to pull her aboard, but this strong, independent woman, recognising a strong, independent Galadriel, takes charge. One wonders why Galadriel does not offer to tow them back to Middle-earth, until it becomes apparent even perfect beings need a drink. One sip is enough to return all her strength. Remove your hand from me, sir! Upon learning they are not only stuck in the ocean, but now stuck with Galadriel, they scream for help from a nearby ship. Be careful what you wish for, for now a shark the size of Sauron is heading their way. While Galadriel is thinking she's having shark fin soup for dinner tonight, the mere mortals face an existential threat. She leaves them to their fate with another Olympic record length, and calmly returns to the broken boat later. If there is a place to lead, she becomes the leader, and Halbrand quickly learns his place. When he mentions orcs chased him from his homeland, it all comes together like Sherlock in his mind palace. Sauron! I have pursued this foe since before the first sunrise blooded the sky. 
even with the scantest of clues, or no clues at all, Galadriel Holmes is afoot. In a rare moment of weakness, Galadriel offers her hand to save Halbrand from a raging storm, but lightning strikes her down to the murky depths, like Jack in Titanic. No good deed goes unpunished. Halbrand returns the favour and dives to rescue her. It is a moment Galadriel will never forget and never repeat, for a man saving a damsel in distress is not befitting of a 21st century saga. Forever linked to boats, paper or otherwise, Galadriel wakes up on one, worse for wear. Clearly she forgot to pack her hairbrush or a change of clothes. She arrives in Numenor and Halbrand says, Since when did men build kingdoms like this? Sharp-witted Galadriel, these men are not like you. He is put firmly back in his unmanly place and learns elves like her gave them Numenor as a gift for helping them in battle. No man can build this kingdom, only Galadriel. Galadriel kneels before Queen Miriel, but is stopped in her saintly tracks. No one kneels in Numenor. A progressive kingdom with a virtuous queen. Galadriel's rhetoric does not do the trick, and she is carted off, but still makes time to stick the knife in Halbrand once more. You leapt into the sea to save one life. I seek to save many. He quickly realises his heroic endeavour was a mistake. Sound the alarm, there has been a jailbreak. It took Andy Dufresne 20 years to escape Shawshank. Galadriel in Numenor, about 20 seconds. No prison can house Galadriel. Some elves are just not meant to be caged. She is caught red-handed, but has the upper hand on Elendil immediately. Who is this mortal who speaks to me as if he has the slightest idea who I am? The don't you know who I am routine works, and she is rewarded with a slow motion horse ride across the sands with a smile the Joker would be proud of. Middle Earth's most celebrated mind solves the Sauron riddle within seconds of being presented a scroll by Socrates. If Sauron has indeed returned, the Southlands are but the beginning. Back in prison, she also unmasks Halbrand. Your people have no king, for you are him, rumbled. When Galadriel is afoot, Sherlock stays in Baker Street, for there is no greater detective than the great elf detective. In a fraught meeting with Her Majesty, Galadriel cannot contain her rage any longer. There is a tempest in me, it will not be quelled by you, Regent! Queen Miriel quivers, and throws her lady elf back behind bars, but not for long. Middle Earth's ultimate jailbreaker is out before tea time, and this time in the quarters of the dying white male king Palantir. Now accepting that Galadriel's genius cannot be contained, Miriel introduces her to her father and her magic crystal ball. She sees the future, and it looks bleak, unless you're Legolas. The Queen of the Elves is now free, and the Queen of Numenor becomes her personal escort and her best friend forever. On the road, Galadriel informs Miriel that Halbrand will return to the throne, the King of the Southlands. She fails to inform Halbrand himself, but when she has already usurped the Queen of Numenor, why not this king too? This may be your kingdom, but it is the elf who wears the crown in Middle-earth. When she is not telling kings and queens what to do, she takes on armies of men in epic sword battles. There is no tension, no competition, for when Galadriel wields her wand, she is Barishnikov, Boloin, the Bride. She does not kill Bill, she destroys all men, and shows them that there is no place for a patriarchy in Middle-earth. This is a matriarchy, or a galadriarchy. Future King Farazon makes a grave mistake. I am forced to disagree with the elf. He is lucky to still have a head on his shoulders, but Galadriel shows mercy and puts forward her own opinion instead. Miriel postpones a decision on facing the orc enemy until the morning. In her downtime, Galadriel indulges in one of her favourite hobbies, emasculating Halbrand. Not so long ago, men like me were fighting alongside Numenor. Men like you, not you yourself. She wants him to be the king of the Southlands, but will never acknowledge his manhood. Why do you keep fighting? 
because I cannot stop. The scene is so inspirational that Galadriel cries at her own performance. I have fought for centuries. Her persuasive power overwhelms Halbrand and he weeps too. Now he is ready to become king, albeit a neutered one. Numenor's fiercest warriors board their battleships. They are going to war, perhaps never to see their loved ones ever again. One might think they'd look like Tom Hanks and his men heading into Normandy, but no, they are blinded by the light of the slow-motion, effervescent elf warrior Galadriel. If she had been on the boat to Normandy, there would have been no bloodshed on Homaha Beach only sandcastles and cocktails. Galadriel questions Isildur on why he's up past his bedtime. Pardon me, Commander. Hoping to get the first sight of land? It'll be visible to your eyes in a few moments. Galadriel does not have 20-20 vision. It is closer to 200-20 vision. Is it visible to yours already? Has been for nearly an hour. Isildur may go on to cut the one ring from Sauron's finger, but he will never forget the day he saw the true power in Middle-earth. The brute force of the Orc raids is overwhelming. Towns are falling, villagers are burning, and it's all proving far too much for Arondir, Bronwyn, and particularly white males. All hope looks lost. But there is one thing the white male orc king and his white male orcs did not see coming. Galadriel leading the charge. Anything Gandalf can do, Galadriel can do better. Within minutes she is pulling off the greatest horseback manoeuvres Middle-earth has ever seen and now she wants Adar. Nothing can stop her from the ultimate glory until Holbrand sticks his neck out and takes all the credit. He's ready to stick a fork in the orc but Galadriel tells him to put it down and resist his beastly, vengeful desires. It is no surprise that she is a master interrogator, and without so much as an arrow in the knee, he tells all about his evil Sauron plan. Jack Bauer, time to retire. She would not need 24 hours or even 24 minutes. 24 seconds would suffice. Adar gets under her perfect skin. It would seem I am not the only elf alive who has been transformed by darkness. Okay, that does it. Time for some orc stew. Royal flavour. But Halran swoops in to save the orc king he wanted to kill just a few scenes earlier. When Waldreg puts the sword in the stone and unlocks the fires of Mount Doom, the regular peoples of Middle-earth flee for their lives. Galadriel, the lady's not for turning, even amidst a volcanic eruption. Mount Doom may be raining down, but she knows the only thing Mount Doom fears is Galadriel raining down on it. The day after tomorrow is just another day at the office for Galadriel. She awakes without a scratch or a hair out of place and begins the rescue efforts. There are not many people to save, as these people were mere mortals, not elvish goddesses. She does find one, however, the elf-hating young boy Theo, who learnt the error of his prejudice ways when he met the elf Robin Hood. They go for a nice walk, but quickly find themselves in a scene from The Fellowship of the Ring. Instead of keeping as still as possible like the hobbits, he unsheaths his sword, ready to take on the might of the orc army all by himself. Galadriel thwarts him, but one wonders why she did not spare the five minutes it would take to wipe them all out herself. While Galadriel can see through walls, Queen Muriel can no longer see at all. Halbrand is looking back on his one regret. He is now the king, but it is once again Galadriel who leads the way to Mordor. On the 28th of December 1895, the Lumiere brothers projected the first true motion picture. Since that time, there have been reels of legendary characters gracing the silver screen. Kings, queens, gladiators, masterminds, superheroes, all with their own strengths, weaknesses, and trials to overcome. In the history of film and television, there has never been a character quite like Galadriel. She is the smartest, strongest, bravest, most perfect character to ever exist in any medium. She has no flaw, no fault, and no journey. Her character arc is a straight line to the top. 
She is born perfect, lives perfect, and dies perfect. If all the directors and writers in the history of motion pictures were to sum up Galadriel, they would only need one letter, and possibly a bit of punctuation. A+. Plus. The perfect character, the perfect woman, and the perfect example for all of us to follow. Galadriel of Amazon, the most genius of them all.